Madam Speaker, I refer the Honourable Leader of the Opposition to the reply I made on the 31st of August 2016 in my capacity as the then Minister of Finance and Economic Development to the PNQ of his predecessor, the then Leader of the Opposition, on the same subject. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition was then the Deputy Prime Minister and was party to all Cabinet decisions on matters pertaining to Apollo Bramwell Hospital. Madam Speaker, in 2015, the Apollo Bramwell Hospital, along with the other entities in the BAI group, were faced with a big financial crisis. The hospital was unable to meet its financial commitments that could have led to its closure, with the consequences that some 700 employees would have lost their jobs. Government decided that its priority was to save the jobs of these employees and that the best option was to sell the hospital as a going concern with a condition, with, with a condition to maintain the employees in their jobs. In the transition phase leading to the sale of the hospital, government had set up the NIC Healthcare Limited to oversee its day-to-day -day operation. The NIC Healthcare Limited is a wholly owned subsidiary of the National Insurance Company Limited, which is under the aegis of the Ministry of Financial Services and Good Governance. The sale of the hospital was finalized in January 2017 to the Medical and Surgical Center Limited, a company within the Ciel Group. Madam Speaker, as regards part A1 of the question, the gross proceeds from the disposal of Apollo Bramwell Hospital business, excluding buildings and associated infrastructure, was 700 million rupees. As regards the lease of leasehold land and hospital buildings, the lessee has to pay an annual rent of 60 million rupees. The net amount after the deduction of all costs accrued since April 2015 to date is 77.2 million rupees. Concerning part A2 of the question, that sale to Omega Arc Limited did not materialize because the buyer could not mobilize and transfer to Mauritius by the due date, the required funds to pay for the acquisition. As regards part A3 of the question, it is the practice for the buyer to appoint the notary and the buyer appointed notary Wenda Sominaden. The fees were paid by the buyer. With regard to part A4 of the question, the value of the leasehold land and hospital buildings in the books of the National Insurance Company Limited stood at 2.5 billion rupees. As regards part B of the question, no government can run a country by having constant recourse to commissions of inquiry at the mere request or on the mere insistence of the opposition from any quarter. In fact, gratuitous allegations Baseless criticisms and innuendos, disinformation and distorted facts, and sheer demagogy are certainly not elements that can even remotely justify the setting of such a vital commission as a commission of inquiry. There are no substitutes to evidence. It is therefore not proposed to appoint a commission of inquiry on this matter. Speaker, I was indeed a member of cabinet, but not a member of the kitchen cabinet. So let's continue on that, on that path. Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask the uh, Honourable Prime Minister whether, I'd like to ask the Honourable Prime Minister whether the figure that he gave, 700 million rupees, includes... We have, Madam Speaker, the nation wants to know what happened with all this. And this is why I'm asking. Now, we are talking about 700 million rupees of down payment for the sale 
Are we to understand that the 77 net that is finally received, which will go to the super cash by gold, that includes all payments made to MRA and MPF, etc., for the period? Or does that include the 50 million to be paid to MRA? Mr. Speaker, I know of only one cabinet. Now, maybe since. Honorable Jagru? Now, don't start making provocations. Maybe he's, since he's having a, a new partner, now he knows of a different cabinet. Yes. Now, with regard to uh, whether payments have been made to uh, banks and uh, MRA, uh, let me say that an amount of 59 million rupees has been paid to State Bank of Mauritius and an amount of 59.3 million rupees has been paid to Mauritius Revenue Authority. Now, there are two other financial institutions, MoBank, which has been refunded 165 million rupees, and National Residence Fund, which has been refunded 68.1 million rupees. Now, there has been also a remit of advance that was taken in order to operate the hospital in the meantime, now from State Bank, a refund of 33.6 million rupees. Uh, speaker, the Prime Minister has asked for evidence. I'm going to table a copy of a deal between Megacom, a company called Megacom, and Omega Arc, which in fact agrees to pay, Omega Arc agrees to pay to Megacom upwards of 90 million rupees, Madam Speaker. And it says to Megacom and its stakeholders. So we want to know who is Megacom and who are the stakeholders. And this is what Megacom has promised to do. It has promised to facilitate the deal. I'm going to table this, Madam Speaker. It has promised to liaise with government bodies. It has promised to coordinate, to consult, to assist the company in every way possible so that this uh, this um, deal can happen. It has a, and I would like to ask the Honourable Prime Minister whether he is aware of this, and now that he is aware of this, what is he going to do about it? C can we ask you to table the document, please? Uh, Madam Speaker. Kishok. 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 no. Don't make provocations. Yes. I, I must take cognizance of that document because I'm not aware about this uh, document. Now, whatever happens between a private company, Omega Org, and other people, I cannot answer for that. I can only answer for government's business with regard to the sale of Apollo Hospital government's business when it is to facilitate a deal between government and a private company. So, Madam Speaker, I'm going to say, uh, ask the Honourable Prime Minister, whether this, the whole thing has dragged on from, for about 20 months, from the date, April 2015, to final sale in December, uh, January 2017. 20 months. And the reason for that, the main reason for that, will the Honourable Prime Minister agree, was that Omega Arc was given preferred status and was facilitated all the way so that he could achieve his deal and in the end it couldn't come up with the money. And will the Prime Minister agree that the big error was to allow... One question, not okay. time, please. Will the Prime Minister tell us why Omega Arc was given every facility in the way that it has been given? Madam Speaker, Omega Arc was not given every facility. It was in the normal course of things that when uh, the transaction advisor recommended that the preferred bidder is Omega Arc, then of course there were uh, uh, discussions as to how, uh, yeah, and, and, and as to how they would uh, proceed in order to obtain their permits, licenses, and so on, so that uh, we could finalize the deal. That was it. Now, they were uh, given uh, time in order to effect 
transfer of funds. They were given till the 21st of October 2016. That was the deadline. I am uh, informed that they were not able to transfer the funds to Mauritius and to effect the payment of the purchase price. Therefore, government then uh, decided that we should rescind the uh, asset purchase agreement and then we moved on to the next stage. And I'm speaker, uh, as you will know, it is normal practice to ask, and this was also raised by the previous leader of the opposition, to ask for proof of finance, proof of funds, before even someone is given preferred bidder status. And it is a fact that BDO, the transaction advisor, from October 2015 onwards, was chasing Omega Arc for this proof of funds, and that was, this was never received, and this requirement so was question, waived okay, consistently by... Ask your question. Madam Speaker. No, don't make a long statement. Please don't make a long statement. Ask your question. Well, the, Madam Speaker, I can say that NIC had requested for Omega Arc to show evidence of funds, which they did. In fact, they had communicated documents from banks, if I can remember, probably from Singapore. And, uh, and the, 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 the Honorable Leader of the Opposition is aware of that. He was a member of this government. And when, 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 when government agreed to the proposal of NIC to go ahead with the signing of the asset purchase agreement, he was part of this government. Speaker, if you want me to say what actually happened in cabinet, you'll be very surprised. And I no, don't no, want no, to get no. into that. Leader of opposition, please, you won't be allowed to say what happened in cabinet. Madam, very Madam good Speaker, memory on that. Madam Speaker, let me say one thing. I have replied. I have not mentioned what happened in cabinet. I have said he was part of the government. Discussions took place at the level of government. I have not mentioned cabinet. You want me to say what happened at the level of government? Yeah. Say what you want. I don't think you would. Now, Madam Speaker. <laughs> I don't think you would, Madam Speaker, because I can. You just challenge me. Now. Down, please, on this side of the house. My evidence is that from, 20, from October 2015, proof of funds were required from uh, Omega Arc. It did not submit. It was requested to submit a deposit of 10 percent, six million dollars, in December 2015. It never gave the deposit. Question. Again, Madam Speaker. It was asked. Now, can I this amount. I have to say. Now, don't take my prerogative. It's for me to say whether the leader of the opposition should not make a long statement and whether he should come with a question. Madam yes, Speaker, I can yes. put it in one question, but it's the same, same subject. It's a waiving of these these requirements, which would have shown clearly that Omer Garak never had the money and they were merely courtiers. This is my point. Now, I finish on this question. Therefore, it was requested again to give only 200,000 rupees, 2,000 dollar deposit, and it never did. Why? When the alarm bells were ringing from 2015 until now, was all these requirements waived by NIC Healthcare Limited. Why is it because of the letter from Megacom, which was facilitating all the time? That's my point. No, Madam Speaker, no, not, not at all, not at all, not at all. And I say again that there was no facilities uh, which is abnormal that was given to Omega Arc. In fact, as I have stated, they were the preferred bidder. They had proposed a sum which was in excess of the others. And uh, I will also refer, maybe not refer, remind uh, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition of a cabinet decision whereby letter of com cabinet communique, sorry, communique, which is public uh, and everybody can can have a look at the communique, dated the 15th of July 2016, which says that the letter of agreement has been signed by NIC Healthcare 
with Omega Arc Investments PLC for the sale of business of Apollo Bramwell Hospital. And as an asset purchase agreement would be signed shortly. Now, all this time, we didn't hear about Belgacom or Megacom or whatever come. He was not coming at all. He was not forthcoming at all. Uh, it's only now that we hear all sorts of uh, allegations. And to me, and to me, they are. To me, they. Are, well, if 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 you have any information you want to point out, please. Address, address you do the so? chair, please. I am getting the information, Madam Speaker. I don't know what happens in the kitchen. I have never been there. Now, Madam Speaker, why? <laughs> a gentleman called Leshmi Pasad, chairman of NIC Healthcare Limited. Why did this gentleman write to, to uh, Omega Arc by himself without getting any advice from the transaction advisors? Why did he write to NIC Limited, uh, to Omega Arc, waving, Madam Speaker? the requirement for the, West, West, uh, for the escrow account, and I will table that, and this is what it says. We have taken notes of your points raised to have an escrow agreement. At this stage, we are not insisting on the escrow agreement. And we found out, Madam Speaker, that all this time the taxpayer, Super Cash Black Bull, was subsidizing the hospital to the tune of 20 million to 30 million rupees per month. Uh, let me uh, just give an information with regard to funds. On the 15th of August 2016, NIC Healthcare Limited had received confirmation from a reputable investment bank, that is the Crédit Industriel et Commercial in Singapore, that both Omega Arc and its chairperson have substantial cash and bankable assets. Now, with, with regard to uh, the escrow account that the leader of the opposition is mentioning, I again say cabinet, in fact government, dis decided that uh, they should transfer the funds by at latest 21st of October 2016. They were not able to do so and therefore the agreement was rescinded. Yeah, there must be some confusion in the minds of the Honourable Prime Minister. We are talking about an escrow account since 2015, which was consistently waived, not just at the end there. Therefore, why did Mr. Mr. Leshmi pass? I give the answer. Why did he himself, by himself, waive, or did he do it by himself, waive that requirement as specified in that mail which I've just tabled? Why did he do it? Well, I, I have already answered, Madam Speaker, when the transaction advisor had chosen had recommended Omega Arc as the preferred bidder, then we, of course, uh, started all the procedures in order to see to it that uh, they would uh, acquire this hospital. But again, the fundamental point was that they were not able to transfer funds, and therefore, the deal uh, didn't go through. Speaker, I just want to, time is going by. Will the um, Lord Prime Minister table a copy of the financial proof of, of, of finance that he's mentioning from that bank, crazy something? I don't have the uh, documents, this information with me, but I will seek advice, first of all, and uh, if need be, I will do so. Madam Speaker, I want to ask the Honourable Prime Minister concerning the value of this hospital now in the books of NIC. It is being rented for 60 million a year. Any child who knows anything about valuation will tell you that this building now is not worth more than 600 to 900 million rupees. So that means that the taxpayer will have to fork out the difference between 2.5 billion, which you just mentioned, and the 600, which is now valued, that is 1.9 billion rupees, which the taxpayer will have to fork out to make the, up the loss from this mismanagement. Madam Speaker, that, uh, that valuation that appears in the books of the NIC. It falls under the purview of the Ministry of Financial Services. And uh, you know, for any transfer of undertaking, when you look at the Insurance Act, let me quote section 110B, which says, subsection 1, a special administrator shall, 
after consultation with the Commission, transfer in whole or in part the undertaking of an insurer or any of its related companies to such insurer and any of its related companies as the Minister may approve. Now, the then Minister did approve, the then Minister did find it fit that the value of this concern was... Shut up, Bob! Shut up, Bob! I have called you three times. Please come down on this side of the house. Honorable Bade, you are not allowed to say that the Honorable Prime Minister is lying. You can say that his argument is not correct. So you said not here. Please withdraw this word and we'll continue. There's nothing dishonorable in withdrawing this word. Madam you Speaker. say that his argument is not correct. Madam Speaker, on a point of order, the Honorable Prime Minister can't just stand there and say things which basically are not correct and cannot be substantive. I don't have I don't have I don't have an opportunity to answer what he's saying. Please calm down. Calm down. Honorable Bada, please calm down. Honorable Sudan. Why is it that you are provocating? I'm trying to calm down the house. And now, I'm going to remind honorable members. I'll come back to the point of order of honorable Bada, but I'm reminding this August Assembly, all honorable members, that you are being watched live on TV. And that the population will judge you on the quality of discipline that is in this house. Honorable Bade, I have said, I have said that, I have said that you cannot say that the Honorable Prime Minister is a martyr. This word is unparliamentary. Withdraw this word and say, withdraw this word and say that his argument is not correct. That is it. We won't lose the time of the house. Please say so. Please say so. Oh, Madam Speaker, what he's saying is certainly not correct. Whether he has the mens rea to lie or so not, I don't know. So I'm withdrawing, I'm, I'm withdrawing the word liar, but he is okay. misleading okay. the public. Yes. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I, he has to withdraw unconditionally. Otherwise, I'm not going to. No. Honorable Leader of Opposition, please. Now, calm down. Honorable Leader of Opposition, Honorable Leader of Opposition, have you almost reached the end of your PQ? No, you're, you've got more questions. I'll tell you I'm finished, Madam Speaker. Ma Madam Speaker, I wanted to ask uh, an old Prime Minister, who appointed notary Wenda Sominaden? Was it the buyer, as he seems to be suggesting, or in fact, it was NIC Healthcare Limited itself, and I will table evidence to that effect. Madam Speaker, it is the practice in a sale for the buyer to appoint the notary. And in this case, the buyer appointed the notary. Mail. Dear Fadil, I think it was the chairman of something, we wish to inform you that the board of NIC Healthcare Limited this meeting held today. Please, why are you getting excited with me? Calm down, please, calm down. Calm down. Honorable Leader of Opposition, I just wanted to know from which document you are reading. Abling from a mail. Okay. But then we have to see what that is. Honorable Leader of Opposition, please table the document. Table the document right now. Table. Take the document to the table, madam. Yes. You did not hear? Did you hear the question? I heard. Of course I heard. But my, Madam, madam Speaker, I don't know what is contained in the supposedly mail. Anyone can recommend anybody, but as at the end of the day, it is 
Let me answer. Are you going to answer for me? Peux vous répondre de mon place là? Mais comment répondre? Laisse-moi répondre. I just do your attention. I know you're very passionate about it, but please calm down. Please calm down. Yes. Honorable Prime Minister, did you have any reply? I, I was saying, Madam Speaker, anyone can recommend anybody, but whatever it is, but it is for the buyer. If the buyer wants to appoint a particular person as notary, oh. as a notary, then, then, ah, okay. Sans, sans no, rôle, toi. <laughs> yes. Allow the Prime Minister to reply. You are nearly finishing now. Then, then it is, it is uh, for the buyer then to choose whoever it wants to appoint uh, as new uh, Properly. But will the Prime Minister confirm that the fees, according to the Notaries Act, which it says here, are to the order of 7 million rupees? payable to this notary, Wanda Saminaden? Well, I believe that uh, the, uh, they have abided by the law. As it is prescribed in the law, the fees that has to be paid, I don't have the information about how much fees has been paid. But it is, it is uh, Ciel who has paid the, the fees and not government. So, what is it? Concerning, Mr. Madam Speaker, concerning the notary's fees uh, and the email that was just put in by the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, can he confirm that the, even the asset purchase agreement that government had authorised the signature thereof between Omega Arc and NIC Healthcare, since it was approved by government that from that very day onwards, it was the notary Wenda Sominaden who was retained by NIC Healthcare, who was on the, on the case until she was paid between 7 million and 14 million rupees. I, I have information with regard to the sale between uh, Apollo and uh, the Ciel uh, group. I don't have the other information. Of course, I can look into it. Honourable Bader. Madam Speaker, will the Honourable Prime Minister confirm to the House whether he has met Mr. Manoj Dansa, the courtier of Megaco Manoj and who has negotiated the four percent commission? Who has negotiated the four percent commission in the Prime Minister's office, in the office of Mr. Prakash Mantura, and whether he will investigate that and come before this House and tell the truth to the public? Because at the end of the day, the commission of 4% was an essential element of the deal, and that's why Omega Arc was reimbursed $200,000, which he has not stated to this house today. Okay. Madam Speaker, these allegations from the leader of the Pepsi Party are gratuitous, and I challenge him to say this outside the house, and say this outside the house, and then you will see. Ah, and then, and then you will, and then you will see, and then you will see what metal I am made of. Yes, as you have, as you have pointed out to me before, I would very humbly request the honourable prime minister no, no, to withdraw the words Pepsi Party. But in any case, he hasn't answered the question. Pepsi. You don't he hasn't Pepsi. answered the question. So therefore, well, then Coca so therefore, I'm not allowed to stand. You can't you know. said, sit down. Oh, the honourable Sudan. Not he has not Please calm down. Please calm down. Okay. He hasn't answered the question. So I'm going to table a document which basically shows that Omega not only had negotiated the purchase of Apollo, but also Mobek. And this is addressed to his ministry, to his financial secretary, I'm tabling the document. And there was a commission on Mobek as well. Okay. Yes. Please sit down, Robert. Remember, sit down. You have to reply. Well, let me, you, you don't want me to say. Again, let me say that these are gratuitous. 
Yesterday you were licking, you were licking my hand. And now the boss. Oh, no. No. This is totally unacceptable what you've done. This is unacceptable. No, I don't care where you are. Honorable Badr, Honorable Badr, I have to order you out. I order you out. I have to order you out. I think that, please sit down. Please sit down. I think you have you have been honorable Baden, you have been in this house for two years now. You should know that obscene gestures are not acceptable in this house. The whole population has seen what you've done. This is totally unacceptable. I order you out. This is totally unacceptable. No. The last question is for leader of opposition. Last question is for you, and time is over already. I have, I have to, yes, answer, have I to have answer to the last yes. allegation. Yes, please, please. I, let me, you haven't replied. Let me answer. He hasn't replied. He but hasn't you, replied. you put a question. He's put, your partner has put a question. Now, I say, I say this to the opposition. If they are serious, let them, I will invite the, the honorable leader of the opposition to uh, Table to uh, make a declaration. Yes, yes, yes. Time is over. Time is over. This honorable leader of opposition, please sit down. Please sit down. Honorable leader of opposition, please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. I'll suspend the question. If you continue, I'll have to suspend. If you continue, I will have to suspend. You want me to just end the session? I suspend. Okay, I suspend the session.